Welcome everybody to Sports Fluent. I'm Anthony K. Welcome everybody to the Sports Fluent podcast. I'm your host as always, Anthony K. And I'm joined this week by professional basketball player, Jory Davis. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Anthony. I'm excited to, to be on the podcast. Um, I feel like it's going to be a great conversation. So uh, just good, to, nice to be here and to, to finally kind of meet on this call. <laughs> yes, yes. We've had a couple of tries. So I'm glad we finally, we finally got together. So I want to start off kind of with your background. So I know that you're kind of from New Orleans. And how do you end up at Indiana? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's been a journey, um, but I'm born and raised in New Orleans, actually on the West Bank. So Harvey, Louisiana, specifically, um, right outside of New Orleans. And how I ended up in Indiana, New Orleans, my mom, uh, Mary Lou, was working with Xerox at the time. He was actually on international assignment overseas in England. And so when they got married, um, I finalized my eighth grade year in New Orleans. Um, and then I followed my mom and my stepdad to England for my freshman year of high school. Then from there, we went to Rochester where my stepdad was living anyway before he went on international assignment um, and finished high school there. And then that's where, um, because I was in England, a lot of, you know, my recruiting process my freshman year was kind of out of the window. Um, So that's where a lot of people started to find me. And Coach Jack and actually Coach Wilson, two of the coaches that ended up being at Indiana, they were at smaller schools, Kent State, and Coach Jack was at Hoff. And they both were recruiter at that time. And, uh, they both were like, yeah, she belongs at this level, not the level we were recruiting her at. And when they had the offer from Indiana, and it just felt right. Uh, the school and also the coaching staff checked off so many boxes. And, and that's kind of like the quick story of the journey of how I ended up at Indiana University. So by, the time, so by the time you got to Indiana, you had already actually moved around then a little bit. So you kind of already had that international feel for the differences between, because one of the questions I was going to ask you was, so you're fortunate, right? You're at Indiana University and then you get drafted by the Indiana Fever. So that's mm-hmm. nice if you enjoy being in Indiana. Yeah, I mean, it is nice to to stay close. Um, it's nice in general to get drafted. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what team it is. Fair enough. Um, it's nice to get drafted in general, but it was even better to to hopefully make that work um, and keep the, you know, the fans that I've been able to, to have support me in, in Indiana, you know, continue to be able to support me. So tell me about that experience uh, in the WNBA and then kind of into how you end up going, because I know that you played in a couple other countries after that inter- internationally. How does that all come about? And what are some of the differences you found? So for women, when, when we get, you know, when we finish our college careers, the WNBA draft is immediately after. So I didn't have much time to prepare. Um, and that situation is the same for young ladies to this day. Uh, we don't have time to prepare. I was, I was drafted, didn't even know. I was actually in class and someone said, wait one second, but I want to congratulate Joy for being drafted. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then like, as <laughs> soon as he said that in class, I see my phone ringing and it's my agent that I recently decided to go with. Um, like I think it had to be like two before that um, or a week before that. And I was drafted. From there, of course, like any rookie, you know, I wasn't thinking business. I wasn't thinking what's going on on the business side. I was just thinking, oh, I need to do my athletic part, get in the gym. And that's what I did. Tried to set up a, a uh, workout since I was right there to go and meet Stephanie White and the staff. I uh, set that up, got to the gym. All the doors were locked. It was dark. <laughs> uh, one of the managers for Indiana was also a, a ball girl and everything for the fever. So, you know, they were all rooting for me. So she was like, I was like, hey, are you in there? Because I don't know where everyone is. And I got in there uh, and they told me that, oh, we could, they couldn't do the workout for some reason. Um, but then later on, I found out that the truth of the reason was that they knew I was about to get cut because the next day I got a call from the GM uh, at the time and she said I was cut. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really go through the WNBA process fully as I expected. Um, I never really got a real chance truthfully um to show my talent and then uh, my agent of course she was just like this is normal (laughs) you know don't worry about it and that's when she presented me with the the opportunity to go to Israel um, which at the time was a very jam-packed league it had some all-stars in that league um actually 
um, Planette Pearson, Gia Perkins, just to name a few. Um, then he had a lot of younger stars um, that were in that in that league as well. So um, it was it was a good league, but uh, you know that's how my journey with the WNBA ended real quickly, and I kind of shifted my mindset to overseas basketball. Yeah, because at that point, and obviously prior to the NBA, after college, there's not really a lot of opportunity, right, for for female basketball players. It, in most cases, all the ones I've talked to have had, even the ones that were playing for years in the WNBA, had to go overseas to play a little bit. It's It seems pretty common. Um, obviously, now there's a few more teams, and it sounds like there's a few more coming, so that might change uh, that dynamic a little bit. Um, how do, how do you transition from, or because you were playing high school in England, did you transition to kind of the European game pretty easily, or was there still a transition process that you found? Um, the transition process uh, was fairly easy going to Israel to start because the type of the style of play in Israel, mm -hmm. um, there are like, there at the time it was four Americans per team. So oh, okay. it was a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It was a lot of um, more ISO situations and kind of creating your own um, type of, you know, creating for yourself, right? basically. So that wasn't hard for me um, in the sense of basketball. The hard part was separating from team to like you're a professional and you are your own team in right, a sense. Right. Like you have your team, but you also need to make sure you're doing what you need to do for your career. And that took some time because I came into it like we were a college team again, Kumbaya, and like this right. is our goals. And that wasn't the case. I had I quickly realized like, hey, if you don't be a little selfish, you won't make that it. Individual business side of things where it's right, that's very different from college. Right. Because you don't you don't really have to worry about that individual, you know, contracts and and those types of things in college. It's probably a good thing about it. Yeah, you're not worried about that. Yeah. Um, you're kind of truthfully in a box in college. A lot of those things are taken care of. A lot of the business side, um, you don't really get to hear about it. Um, you're just kind of in that box of be a team and these are the rules. This is the, our leader and this is your role. Right. Uh, whereas when you get into the pro world, no one's going to put set things for you. Um, you have to kind of figure that out and learn how to manage that on your own. And that's what you know, I kind of, you know, quickly figured out in a sense. So from, from Israel, how, what does the journey look like? How do you now end up playing, playing in Greece? I know you've only been there for, have, has it even been a week yet or a couple of days? I think you since you landed in Greece. Yeah, it's been, it's been about, uh, what, three days, four days. So it hasn't been very long. It hasn't been a week yet. Um, but my journey, um, you know, it was kind of up and down until this point. You know, this is my 10th year, it's the decade season, but um, I went through a couple, um, I've played, you know, for good teams, bad teams, medium teams, uh, kind of went through all the different issues you can go through overseas. And, um, you know, I played in Romania, Targoistan, um, my second year, which actually, you know, I didn't get a job right after Israel. So I was at home halfway. I went over in Christmas. Then from Romania, played in Switzerland two years. And then I went from Switzerland, um, actually took the train after I finished my season in Switzerland to go to Italy and do a tryout. And that's how I got my first contract. I signed on the spot in Italy. And then I played two more years. I played three consecutive years in Italy, went to Valencia, Spain, went back to Italy. And then now... Um, I'm in Greece playing for Olympia Coast. So I got to tell you, growing up as a kid, um, so I'm Greek, obviously, I feel like I, I've said that to you a couple of times now, but my dad was a big fan of Pauk, which is probably another team you'll, you'll be playing against at some point. And just, just to, I think, upset him, I be I started cheering for Olympia Coast. And, and that's how and it's, oh, and it's been since I was you know, four years old. So once, once I heard that you had signed there, I was like, oh, I got to talk to her. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, granted that was soccer and then it kind of as I got older we started watching uh, more Euro League and, uh, and 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 the basketball side of things but right. um, are they treating you well have you picked up any Greek yet do we need to get you some lessons do we need to call up some of the relatives and get you get you hooked up how, how, how you how you enjoying that first week yeah yeah the most the most I have is Yasas <laughs> and uh, you know Kala 
Kyla, I know is good. So now I have to learn everything that comes yeah. after it. Um, but, you know, actually, I, my, one of my tattoos I got in Valencia is agape. And it's, it's huh. written in Greek huh. um, because, love. you know, it was, yeah, agape love, unconditional love was, you know, uh, it was, you know, from the Bible. So I put it in Greek. And so it's funny, like, you know, now I'm like, okay, now I really need to learn this language. So <laughs> I do need some lessons, but it's been great. You know, we're, we're, we're close to the beach. Of course, Greece has great food. The people are very open, you know, similar to the Southern Italians. So yeah. when it comes to the life and everything, it's, it's definitely good. The people um, are open and, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what comes next. I'm excited to, of course, as always meet new people. Um, just even outside of the sports world um, and add a new country that, you know, I can, you know, say I have some people that I call my second family. So the last thing, and I, you know, one of the, I think important things that I wanted to bring you on and talk about is Weevolve. So you're the founder and CEO of Weevolve, Weevolve, excuse me. Tell us what's that about? How did you come up with it? And, and what is it going to be moving forward? What's, what's the future, future plans and goals? Yeah. So um, we've all came about actually during, um, it was a, my season overseas in Italy, and it was actually a great season for me individually. I actually led the league in scoring that year. However, you know, mentally and a lot of the things going on around me um, made me really recognize that a lot with the business side overseas uh, was lacking. There was no real community. There was no really advocating for us uh people still know nothing about professional sports since ran overseas and so i figured we needed something so I, I kind of started to just write down my own pain points my own struggles the things i wish i had access to at that moment and i started to, to just read more and that's where i came up with evolve my personal mantra is willingly evolving so that's where i was like we all need to be doing this as athletes because ultimately that's the only way we're going to progress in the sports industry globally. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came up with the name We Evolve, which stands for We Evolve. Um, and in a sense, We Evolve um, is a private networking and social learning platform for elite athletes to help them manage their athletic and professional careers. Um, so we can just lead more enriched lifestyles, um, and whether that be athletically or professionally. And the platform is meant to help us manage all those pieces, especially the lost community of overseas athletes, because we don't have the resources that many of the pro sports in America has access to. Right. And um, so when it, there's three pillars to it, there's the player empowerment piece, the social piece, well, the off court piece, and then there's the mentorship piece. And all of those pieces will um, have some technology to it that will help the player ultimately manage all three pillars in one place and you know we will build community um the mission is basically simply to unite the collective and uniting the collective includes current um, and those the few fleets coming into the community from a global scale and um that's that's the starting point right now is just to get us all united because that was one of the biggest issues with everything um and so yeah the the, the mission is to unite us and then the vision of course um, is to unleash that power that comes from uniting us, you know, and that's, we would have more knowledge because we're in one place that we can share our struggles and share the things we learn. You know, we'll have more power to advocate for ourselves because we're united. Um, the things that come from us being united, that's the vision um, ultimately. So that's, that's the path we're on right now where we evolve. And um, we've just been slowly building the community, slowly uh, figuring out the technology side and how we can connect everyone. And um, thus far, it's been, a, it's been a cool journey on my entrepreneur <laughs> path. Uh, it's new. I'm a rookie in the new game. So, No, I love it. And I think it's a great idea because I think you don't, it's, it's one of those things that you don't think about, right? When you're an athlete in the U.S. or Canada and, and you go to a team and you're playing, you have that support system that even if they're not closer in your same city, it's really easy to stay connected. You know, if, if you're in Indiana and, you know, your family's in Chicago or even New Orleans, like it's still, you can stay connected with them. Whereas when you're, 
you know, families in Rochester and, and you're in Israel, that's a different, you know, it's, it's tougher. You don't have that, that base. You don't have that support system. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great idea to bring that because, you know, for everyone that I've talked to that's gone over and played overseas, that's the biggest thing. They say, Hey, I love playing here. The people are great, but you're kind of, you know, you're alone right? For, for a lot of the time, like obviously other than teammates, but some of those teammates, especially if they're from there, they have families to go back to and, and other things where you're coming from, from the US, let's say to Greece, you probably don't have, you know, someone there for you to, you know, when you're having those bad days or when you have some time off to as great as, as it is maybe to travel by yourself sometimes. Uh, it's also good. You, you also need that support system uh, for those downtimes. So I, I, I love what you're doing there and I really appreciate it. How can people uh, find Weevolve or get a hold of you uh, directly if they need to? Yeah, so thank thank you um, for the words. It's definitely needed and it's definitely something, you know, I will continue to to make sure we can execute the, the ideas behind the vision. Um, they can find and learn more I'm at Weevolve.net, www.weevolve.net. Um, they can also really connect with us to me directly via LinkedIn or Jory Davis 32 on Instagram. Right now, those are our two, those are the two main places you can find out. And if there are any young athletes that are looking and thinking about overseas, please, um, you know, go to Wevolve.net, click build with us and reach out and we'll get back to you guys to help you definitely learn more and prepare yourselves before your senior year ends and you're struggling to find the process of how to get there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Joy, for your time. Let me know if anyone gives you any trouble there in Athens or in Greece and, and uh, I'll keep sending you over some ideas for, uh, for things to order off the menu that, uh, that I love. All right. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Please, yes. Like, hey, if you have family here, I am all for anybody that wants me to come and taste some of their dishes or <laughs> you know, any places that you suggest that aren't like the typical tourist areas. Let me know. So I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad to know I have like someone that's a local in my corner. <laughs> you, you, you got it. I'll be sending you. I'll be sending you some ideas shortly. All right, again, thank, thank you for your time. I know it's late over there, so I'll, I'll let you get back to it. Uh, it's been a pleasure.